Okay, so with uh, what we're going to be doing today as uh, we are working through everything, uh, I'm going to be showing you a couple of examples of uh, what's, you know, how to use Photoshop, uh, how to uh, get, uh, let me, um, how to use it, set things up, and I'm going to give you some time to experiment around with the different things today. When you go to uh, Photoshop uh, and launch it, this is the first screen that you'll see. Okay, and so uh, it's got a lot of different cool things as far as what's new if, you've, if you had to update it. But uh, I'm just going to close out of here and uh, so that you can see what the interface of Photoshop looks like. And when you do, I've got different projects that I've done down here, so you uh, won't really see anything down in, the, in this area. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do, and like I said, I'm gonna show you how to do things and then give you plenty of time to actually do them uh, and experiment around with them, and you'll have this video that you can look back to. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to File, go up to New, and when I do that, this screen will open up. Now, I've got recent items here because I have, have done a lot of different projects and I've got a lot of different dimensions and things of that nature. Um, you will not see a lot of these. You might see one or two. Over here, uh, <clears throat> this is where you can call, you know, tile your project. And then this gets into the size of what you're working with. And what we see here is the width is tw uh, 12 and the height is 12. Right now, this is in inches. There are other uh, units of measurement out there, pixels, centimeters, millimeters, points, and picas. I, the key is to always make sure that you have inches selected, okay? Uh, if for, it could be as a pixel, as you all remember, uh, with your Spark page, uh, a, pixel, a pixel is a picture element. It's a small dot of information, and it's very tiny for the picture. And resolution, uh, once again, another term from the Spark page is we're, we're going to leave it set at 100. Uh, in color mode, just leave it at RGB color, and you can just leave it at 8-bit. Uh, at and everything else, uh, that is the key is to change or is to have that setting, the settings uh, as you see there. I'm going to go ahead and hit create uh, once I, my button, so I'm going to hit create. And when I hit create, what it's going to do is it is going to create and pull up a blank document uh, that you'll see here momentarily. Uh, I don't know why it's, uh, here we go, it's acting a little slower to, um, today, I don't know why. But it's pulling up a blank uh, page, uh, work page here, and this should uh, turn into be white here in a second. Like I said, I'm not sure exactly why it is acting a little bit slower today. There we go. But we've got ourselves a blank page here. And a couple things that I want to point out. Uh, instead of, all right, for, instead of raising your hand today, if you have a question, unmute your mic and just ask it as I'm, as I'm talking, okay? Because I'm looking at a, a different screen, so if you have that to just go ahead and un unmute and ask away. Um, um, so I'm just confused because I went on, I searched up um, Photoshop and it took me to like the Adobe one and it says I'm on the creative cloud. I don't know where, how to get to what okay. you are. Okay, well, uh, let me go through uh, the, the, this demo part and then I'll help you help with opening things up and going from there. Um, so just kind of hang tight for a sec and it's okay if you're just kind of watching and you'll have access to this video uh, to how to do things. So just kind of put a pause on that part for one second and then I'll, at the end of class or after I wrap up, I'll help with some technical issues. Um, Mr. Anna said she's waiting in the lobby. Uh, okay, because I don't see anyone in the lobby, but I will send her a request to join and see if that happens. Uh, there was a glitch with Teams earlier today, so it might be that she just needs to leave and rejoin. So just if you can text her that, that'd be great. Um, so back to kind of what we're looking at here. 
uh, in Photoshop, we have uh, the first thing I always want you to do is go up to View and make sure your where it says Rulers are selected uh, because that it will show you the rulers across the top of the page and give you an idea as far as actual size for things. So this is like one inch, two inch, etc. So rulers are important. Now with Photoshop, what is really cool is your toolbar down here. If you just let your uh, uh, cursor hover over it, it will tell you what the that tool is. For example, the this is the eyedropper tool, and it will give you a little bit of a graphic uh, to explain, you know, what that tool is, and it'll kind of show you a little bit about what it actually does. Um, and so, like for this is a quick selection tool, and then within Photoshop, you can there's a lot of really great tutorials. Uh, if you click learn new it w or learn how, it will show you a lot of different tutorials that you can use within uh, Photoshop or how to use that particular tool. Now, with this uh, blank document, the first thing I'm going to show you is, a, is the brush tool. And I'm just going to come in here and select it. Now, when you see the circle there, I, ha I have the ability just to, right now I'm in, I have a black and color selected okay and the size of my brush is 50 pixels and this is where understanding some pixels comes into play so this is what you know 50 pixels right here would look like i can change the size of my brush and this is pretty uh important to learn how to do i can change it up to let's say 114 pixels boom okay so you can see the different sizes there and changing the pixels now the hardness uh Compare that and the one I just did there. If I take it to like a 25% hardness, boom. You see how it kind of feathers it out a little bit and creates that uh, dissolving feature? That's what uh, feather or what the hardness does. Okay. So using your paintbrush, you can go in and you know, paint and do different stro strokes there. By clicking here, I can change my color. I can go like to red and I can... Uh, and I can go in with the change, you know, the the spectrum here and change different colors, and that, so that's how I can go in and, and make those those changes. I click OK, and boom, I've got my color my color changed. Now the one thing I, I do want to point out to, and show you is I have also if you go down to window and, and oh, and at any point if you get your windows get out of whack or crazy go down to workspace and you and just and go to make sure photography is set is check or hit reset photography and set if, the, if your windows get out of whack or looks really weird if i go the, one of the things that you should always have checked also is history because history is which will show up and i've i have mine already moved over here uh, so that I can see it, and what that will do is um, it will show you the history of all the actions that you've taken in Photoshop, and I can click back through my history and, and see what's going on, and that just helps with things. Using Control-Z, uh, excuse me there, Control-Z will allow me to undo things and go uh, just like uh, if you're in Microsoft Word or whatever, Control Z will automatically step you back instead of having to go through and click click through your history if you want. Now the the, the next component I want to point out is this thing called over here where it says background. And understanding layers is a key concept in Photoshop. Okay, for example, what I'm going to do is I am going to take and I am go going to draw just a basic straight line here or a pseudo straight line now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to uh, what I'm going to do is take and I'm going to create a new layer down at the bottom here I just hit plus and I have what's called layer one okay on layer one that is on top of my background layer I'm going to change a different color for this example here go to black. I'm going to take, and if I draw a line that goes like this, OK, 
okay? The black is on top of the green because layer one is on top of the green, okay? Layer one is on top of the background. Background, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and create another layer, layer two, and I just come to, down to the plus sign right down uh, to the bottom right where it says create new layer. And for this example, I'm just going to go and, oh, this looks good. <clears throat> I'm gonna do a line that goes like this, okay? So the blue is on top of the black line because it, you know layer two is on top of everything. So that's on top of every single layer that we have. Now, what I can, can do, and then layer one, one and you can rename layers if you want to, by the way, just by right clicking on the, um, on, the, they just came out with a new version, so I'm trying to look at something here. Uh, actually, <clears throat> to rename, you just du double click on layer one, and you can put, for example, layer one is my black line. Layer two is my blue line. Background, I'm just going to leave uh, uh, there. I'm going to take my uh, uh, blue lin. I should put the E on there. Um, but so what I'm going to show you how to do is I'm going to take my blue line layer, and, th and this is the concept in Photoshop that uh, if you, as we start doing more things in Photoshop, working with layers and understanding those concepts are pretty important. So I'm going to take the blue line, and I can actually drag, take and drag it underneath the, the black line layer, and look at what happens on on Photoshop when I when I let it go. It just re it it reordered the, them there, okay? It, it uh, <clears throat> changed the order, and it made it so that you have um, you have a different line there, and so you, that's one of the things that you've got there when it comes to layers. Now, a background is something that op that opens up, well, and when you open up your image, it, it has a white background. So this is a, a white color here. I can convert a, a background into a layer if I wanted to by just simply double clicking it and converting that background into a, into a layer that I could move around if I, if I wanted to. Um, but I'm, I'm not for right now. Um, because I can't just take the background and move it around because the background, a background layer is always at the bottom of, the, of your layers. So what I'm going to do here is, uh, you know, I've got these up here. Whatever the key thing with layers is if I want to do something, it, knowing what layer you're working on, if you are, uh, let's say working on something and you're trying to make an edit, but you can't. Because check what layer you're working in. For example, I'm in the, the black line la layer. If I come over to my eraser, uh, which right here, and let's say I wanted to, to try and erase part of the black line, like I can come in here, boom, but then I take the same eraser and I'm not able to erase any of the blue or green line because that's not the layer I'm working in. Uh, so I could come in and boom, there, black line, because I'm in the black line layer. If I wanted to work then on the blue line, I could come here and select the blue line layer and voila. Okay, so knowing what layer you're working in is a uh, important component there for you to, to be able to, to um, use and do. Okay. And once again, this is my history right here, so I can step back and see everything I've, I've done and go through here. But notice, I want to show you something here. If, let's say, I come to my history and, this, and I go through and I make a, new, a change, for example, I'm in my uh, eraser tool, look at what happens to the history here once I do that. Boom. What it does is it creates a brand new history uh, and you can't really go back and and redo things there so just something to be mindful of as you if you step back and work through your history there uh, so that is one thing
I'm going to uh, show you a couple things for about another five to ten minutes, and then uh, I'm going to in, I'm going to cut you loose and let you just experiment around with with Photoshop if you have it downloaded. If you don't, uh, definitely get that next week. If you're having issues, get up to school and see Mr. Deerhart or help desk person to get uh, to to get you up and up and running. Um, so these are a couple other things here, uh, and like I said, with your brush, you can change all different colors. Uh, within brushes, you've also got um, different uh, styles of brushes, like th here, and that can create different effects. Uh, so you can you can you know, go through and look at some of the di different styles there. Uh, I'm just going to go back into a standard one, and these are ones that you've used recently, by the way. Uh, so those are d different aspects with, with brushes. Now, uh, there, like I said, there are tons of other different components, and I'm going to start going you know, through and spending about 15 minutes, uh, the next couple classes, walking you through how to use different things like the selection tools, the marquee tools, uh, the eyedropper tools, etc. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do those, but if you want to while we're... You know, while I'm giving you time to experiment around and play around, if you want to go in and take and do different, uh, you know, experiment around and click, let's say, well, learn how to, uh, it will pull up a really good tutorial and just show you how to use different things uh, and do different uh, neat tutorials on different, uh, different tools and different things there. You know, four minutes, five minutes. These are exceptional. Back a couple, even for about four years ago, the tutorials for Adobe were really crappy, but they've spent a lot of time and money creating great tutorials. Now, let's say you are working on something and you want to save it. If you go up to File and you go to Save As, okay, right now, uh, when you this will come up. You can save things to the cloud. You can save things to your computer. Um, yeah, I think it's good to do kind of sometimes if it's a really big project, uh, an important one, save it both to the cloud and to the computer because then you've got to back up just to be on the safe side. But for right now, I'm just going to click save your computer. And when you do, uh, it's going. this is going to come up. You can title it whatever you want. I'm just going to do... And this is where the file types come in. Okay, PSD is a Photoshop document. Okay, where it saves all, saves your document, saves all the different layers, etc. Okay, if you come in and change it to a JPEG. Okay, I and I click save. What it's going to do is this doc, this box is going to come up. And I will always do, 99% of the time, I'm just going to take the slider over to large file. And then um, notice, I'm going to click cancel. Notice what happens to the layers over here when I go in and I make the change from a PSD to a JPEG. Okay, watch what happens over here. And I when I go to hit, hit save. Okay. That took all of the layers, and what it did is it combined it all into one layer, and that's called flattening, okay, flattening the image. And when you do that, it takes all the layers and it syncs them all up in, into the same one so that you, uh, so that it's just the same same layer. Um, and so that's just something to, for you to also keep an eye, eye on and let you know what that does. You can also do a... If you go up to layer, you can also do new, new layers up this way if you want. But then I can also take and flatten the image, and that does all of the layers together as one. But then I can also do what's called merge down, and that would take what I have with, with layer two and merge it with layer one so they're the same layer. Now, also, let's just say I did something, uh, and I'm just going to create a new layer. And I am going to, let's just say, go here. 
let's say with this smiley face, let's say I've got it drawn there, but I really want to move it. I can click the move tool up here and whatever layer I'm working in, the smiley face one, I can click and I can move it around. Okay, that's something that, that, that I can do there without affecting the other layers there. Now, if you have something in Photoshop, and this is something that we're going to be using a lot of when we start doing things, editing photos, but um, I can take whatever layer I'm working in and I can go and use my transformation command, which is which I can either do control T with my computer with my keyboard, or I can come up to my um, uh, well, generally control T works the better, uh, best is quicker. But it, in my transformation, I can take whatever I've got and I can make it bigger. Okay, and whenever you do, it's going to look a little pixelated. And, uh, but and to lock that in place, that transformation, all I have to do is hit uh, hit uh, enter and it locks it in place. The transformation command is a big one in Photoshop. We're going to be using a lot of that over the next uh, couple weeks. And I can still move it around here if I want to. And if I go into control T for my transformation, I can also take and I can rotate things as well. This will come in ha handy when we get into a Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head project. All right, so uh, these are, this is a, a, you know, a couple of, oh, once you've got your, your transformation want to be done, hit enter to lock it in place again. Remember, that's pretty important. And so I know the size of what I'm working with here, which is which is key as well. Uh, and there are, like I said, there are plenty of other tools in here that you can, if you want, um, because I'm going to get ready to, to wrap things up today, and you're going to have time to just experiment around uh, and what, do what I call as playground time. You can, and you're going to have this video that you, I want you to use as your primary first time if you have a question watch this the video you can rewind it you can check things out with it and um, this is going to be just just solely for your class so you've got you can see the actual lesson that, that we did um, so those are a couple of things there if uh, let me go ahead and just I'll just open up a, a picture and show you just show you a couple things picture wise uh, let's just go here. This is a picture of me at Mount Rainier uh, when I was hiking a couple, this was back in 2009, this was back in 2009 I think maybe. Um, but it, I've noticed with when I opened up the picture that it is, the picture is 10 inches wide by eight, 8 inches tall. I'm going to take and do control plus to zoom in. And if I do this a lot, and you see these little boxes, each one of those boxes is actually a, pic a pixel. Okay, so that's what a pixel is in a picture. Uh, and this will show up a lot clearer on the video when you watch it, but that's what a pixel is. Uh, a couple other things that you can do, and if you want to download a picture, uh, and I'll just, and, uh, you can, what's come in, to show you a couple other tools to let you play around with today. Uh, here, the smudge tool, you know, this, and this will let you take and give myself a little bit of a horn there. You can smudge things in pictures. Remember, your br the size of your brush is key as well, key uh, with doing this. Uh, I'm going to do control Z to undo that, but then I can also take the strength too and go up to 100 and see, and see what happens. Okay, and you can see how that changes things to there. So your smudge tool, control Z to undo, changing with the strength there. Uh, if you click and hold down, it, there's a blur tool that you can experiment around with too, where it will just take and make the picture blurry. Uh, that's one component that, that you can experiment around with too and download pictures. Control Z, uh, and it, and so you can experiment around with different pictures and things of that nature uh, as well. Uh, I'll just show you. Let's see here. Um, component here.
here. And if there's a triangle by next to it, you know, with the eraser tool, that means if you click on it, there are other tools behind it. Uh, if you don't see a triangle, that means there is not a uh, there are not additional tools there. Uh, so just to, to, those are a couple different things that you can do if you want to open up pictures and, and, and experiment around as well. Uh, I've shown you a bunch of different stuff today that you can use. Uh, it, and like I said, if you click in, uh, this is really, spot healing brush tool is really cool to experiment around with. I'll just show you here. Uh, that's how I, I sort of remove, remove myself a little bit. Uh, there's content aware that you can uh, pick and uh, you can experiment around with getting rid of things. Basically, a lot of things with Photoshop is going to be me showing you a, a, a couple of, uh, of concepts and then giving you time to just experiment and work around with them. Uh, so, in a proximity match, I mean, like, boom, and a lot of different uh, types of things there uh, that you can experiment around with, different modes, and a lot of, like I said, Photoshop, boom, you see how basically it replaced my head with a mountain, which is pretty cool, and take the size of my brush and lower down and boom and you can click around and, some, and do some different things um, and actually remo remove people from pictures this way too so that's just the, the mode of replacement etc um, uh, lastly the last thing I'm going to show you and remember this is my history and then I'm going to cut you loose uh, the clone stamp tool okay which is here this is how you can clone one part of a picture to the next. And it will there's it shows you a nice little video of how you do it. Uh, you can also click learn how. But if I come in and I'm gonna make my brush just a little bit smaller for this, and I hold down Alt, it changes my brush to like being a crosshair. But what I'm gonna do is <clears throat> I'm going to click over here this part of the picture and then I'm going to come all the way over here and look, look at the size of my brush. When I click down, look at what happens where I put my anchor in over on the far right of the picture. Where that crosshair is, that is what I'm actually cloning on the picture to this other section. So I am basically, if you look at it, if you look at this picture, now, what I've basically created a whole brand new landscape just by cloning and from one part of the, of the picture to the other. Uh, and whenever you're cloning, just uh, making sure you're in the, you know, look at the layer that you're in working with. But that's something that you can do there. So I have to go on and talk for about a half an hour. I'm going to stop the, rec the recording right now.